breathless. <laughs> Yet my heart still beats regardless of the limitation of oxygen. See, it's a heart condition which many physicians would consider a problem because they haven't come across a heart quite like mine often, but sadly neither have you. Because many just make do, loving things that take you out of the equation. Either that or they just love you on special occasions and I know it's true. Because I used to fall under both persuasions that you were still faithful. See, you knew the things I used to love would leave me heartbroken, so you sacrificed a lot to give me a new one. And because it couldn't be because of all that bad blood, you paid a heavy price to give me a blood transfusion. The conclusion being that I'm no longer human but an embodiment of your love and a soul in your possession. You are my sole obsession and so my sole ambition is to love you like you love me at the inception of my creation. Every second of my existence I leave to your imagination. I said every second of my existence I leave to your imagination. Let every word that I speak come from your heart's communication. <laughs> I want to know you more. So I'll inform you for a lot, I wait. Lord, I'm sorry, because I've been deceiving myself in your presence for too long. I've been bringing sin before your throne while singing a song of worship, and what's worse, it's been recurring. In that I've been ever learning of your truth, but never truly yearning to put on the new man, to renew my mind, meditating on all things that are holy so that you can claim unworthy of being called your son. See, it's occurred to me that I've been living a fantasy, claiming I desire you, when it was relationships, really. Constantly making the same mistake as Adam by rejecting your word in favour of Eve, I was the seed that fell among thorns. I had a form of godliness, but living a life of holiness was never something that I committed to wholeheartedly. I never put you first and so I felt so naturally, because I didn't allow you to safeguard the path that lay before me and to redeem myself. <laughs> I focus on how great your love is for me, and yet I'd always ignore the reality that not everything pleases you. So what I'd always do is plead for help whenever I felt convicted, but my speech was restricted because I still lived as if the word repentance never existed. See, my vocabulary never reflected the word that became flesh, so my sentences were largely constructed of fleshly words which only existed to serve the lust which burned within my heart. But I called myself a Christian. <laughs> So sex was never an option I considered, but to Satan that was just fine. As long as any foundation to build a secure relationship with God withered over time, and indeed it did. See, his purpose was to deceive, so he was happy to let me believe I was a Christian when the truth is it was far from the truth. And because I didn't know this, or notice how desensitized from the Holy Spirit I was, I was never set free. And then, he introduced me to pornography. But this wasn't just the mere Playboy channels on page 3, but vivid visual images and videos which burned into my memory. And of course I'd always feel disgusted and so make the same recurring help plea, but the wound was so deep that my heart bled <coughs> for sexual intimacy. So because I stuck by the philosophy of not having sex before I was married, I just go to clubs, just so I could replicate the fantasy. My view of women thus distorted by the industry. See, the thing is, I still went to church, so on the surface I was free, yet inwardly I was struggling with the chains of iniquity. I would always profess a love of Christ openly, but secretly, even if seemingly unbeknown to me personally, it was the devil I knew most even intimately. I said I would always profess a love of Christ openly, but secretly, even if seemingly unbeknown to me personally, it was the devil I knew most intimately. See, one of the many gains of the enemy, it's to distort the messages and concepts in Christianity, so for me, the concept of grace was a mystery. I couldn't understand that in spite of what I've done or will do, Christ set me free. Because of my carnal mind, I just couldn't seem to find a truth in the forgiveness that lasts for eternity. See, I heard it all before, how he died for my sin, how Christ stepped in, how it was my lusts, my pride, my carnal mind, which served to murder him by means of crucifixion. But never did I value the truth of the resurrection. How he died in place for me and rose to show the space for me. How he died in place of me and rose to show the space for me. How he died in place of me and rose to show the space for me. The only thing is, filling up this vacancy isn't easy. I mean, yes, we have to believe, but we actually have to commit suicide but just not physically. In order to break free we have to let go 
of the activities and mentalities which cause us not to grow. This one's called Medical Advice. When the illness you've endured for a while roots deep into the cause of her side, expert advice would prescribe thrice a sip of her honey sweet lip. That's an expert's tip. Followed by a double dosage of stroking her intellect with yours, a gentleman's flex. <coughs> the symptoms should now be suppressed by the strictly kept to conquest. Recovery varies from time to time because lovers tip lasts a life of right. Thanks. <laughs> the JVs, Jameson, Scotch and Bacardis, the rum and coats, vodkas and pina coladas. Oh, the feeling. The feeling. This feeling of disgust must linger in the dust. From dusk till dawn, disgust is prevalent. It pronounces my lament. Alco, be Alco streams burn and scream from within inside my bodily means. I mean, my body means to function, but it's stopping at this particular junction. The distance between sober and intoxication has never seemed further, me being at the latter after an averted splatter on the kitchen floor. <laughs> being overflowed with constant alco supply, to be is to deny. And you are what you eat? Just doesn't apply, because it's the drink that's in my belly. Like this. Swirling delirium, rigid spirited rivers, flooding every inch and extremity of my bodily core. Pervaded. After shock is ever. A self taught lesson is one easily ignored, especially if you yourself are the one. This narrative is quite the taste of failure is depicted. So tomorrow, the spirits flow again, and my body again inflicted. Thank you very much. Once there was a kid with a memory like a sieve, who felt that the world tick tick tock to a clock that he just wasn't with, like he was tuned to a slightly different station. So he started in his own imagination. He loved any word that could be written or read, ate paperbacks for breakfast and lived in his head, for in his mind he could be unbridled see. His mind's eye was unblinded and free, and inside he aspired to be the lead role producer, the judge, the jury, and his own executioner. Saw colours when the primary school playgrounds were grey, so much to say but when he spoke the words just seemed to slip away, but he would twist an angle when he tried to turn a phrase, and spent idyllic young days in a half-awake haze. The outside world left him confused and dazed, envying goldfish for their attention span, and possessions tended to slip from his hands, his books, his Game Boys, his toys and so on, like one minute they were there and the next they were gone, and he was left looking puzzled and confused, not trusted with things people couldn't stand to lose, so lost and bemused, told there was no excuse, his head was in the clouds so he scuffed his shoes, as loose laces left him with two left feet, and his light up trainers dragged to the offbeat. <laughs> But still he plodded on with a numb persistence, hallucinating horizons in the vague middle distance. He followed fantasies till his feet got blisters. His wires becoming crisscross, mind <laughs> twisting, growing pissed off. He always missed the gist and got the wrong end of the stick. His inspiration fizzed, but he couldn't get a grip till he was sick of it. He knew he had a quick wit, but ever inarticulate, so left feeling thick as pig shit. This constant confusion kept him distracted. Passivity pulled the strings and this puppet reacted. Perpetually he became an automaton of apathy and unhappiness arrested him. Almost automatically his floundering mind found books a chore. Couldn't see the point of putting pen to paper anymore. Frustration followed any word he wrote or read and sentences unraveled as he held them in his head till he began to notice changes that he didn't understand. Hairs on the backs of his shaky hands and revelation struck him like a blow to the skull that his limbs had grown longer and his voice had grown dull. His feelings changed from frustration to rage and anger plagued him with his passing age. Each passing day was like a turning page that fluttered before his eyes as he started to realise how to uncross the lines in the eye of his mind. Till he couldn't stand to be dis dismissed anymore, sick of battering his tiny little fists on the door, and fury filled the gaps in each innocent dream. Still sulking unexpressed like a silent scream, he curled his fingers to fists as his uncertain hands, fortified when lashing out at what he didn't understand, so blindly he thrashed, 
smashed and attacked, his mind becoming mashed, growing less and less intact, threw him further out of whack, past the point of going back, a derailed train, full steam ahead with no track, inarticulately screaming like speeding cars and spitting out smoke at indifferent stars, running down darkened pathways from rage in his mind, hunted, hounded, poached and plagued, he binged till he was blind, his blistered feet still found the offbeat but pounded the pavement as his pace increased in retreat, he created a reputation to hide a mind incomplete and cemented himself a place face down on the concrete, he self-medicated until his rage abated and he found he could live in the world that he created, he felt he found the fantasies to fill his empty soul, for if he chose the chemicals and he held the control, and he could live on castles built on sand in the sky, and he could dodge the lows if he was flying fucking high, he poured excess into a glass that he could never fill, and pushed the boundaries of reality with powders, pints and pills. The hours they flew fast, <clears throat> the hands of time passed like strands of sand at the hourglass, and plastered nights became mornings after, and he became the master of his own handcrafted disaster. His private dreams turned to terrors at night, torn with fright and terrified to turn out to the light. And as the hostile sun was dawning each morning, it was every eye in the world that saw him and scorned him and spread before him was the fissure of his claws yawning. So he was left without a breath, gobsmacked and gawping. The mouths of friends stung him with events that he couldn't remember but would never forget. He learned the only permanence lay in regret and aggressive regression when he felt he learned his lesson like he was destined and possessed by a chemical obsession, blind to the irony of his own position. The walking contradiction of an escapist mission for those that he most needed to listen were pushed past the point they could put up with anymore. For when they looked, all that they saw was a wasted, disgraced space down on the floor. He pushed the patience of the ones he loved through more than they could stand, and he felt their fingers slip from his hands like those Game Boys used to. And his young mind became enraged with blame. But honestly, would anybody not just do the same for any self-protecting person would do. And in retrospect, what can you say, but would I really blame you? Pulled by planet's orbits caused craters on collision. So I moved away from the messes he made with each destructive decision. Distortion of his thoughts, he still saw himself as victim, all tragic hero or metaphor, no thought on the pain he was inflicting, and spinning in sinister cycles of sinning is hardly a way to live. Each strand stains the strain until something's got to give, the smashing of his glass as he ran short of stones, the dust settled for a second, and he saw that he stood alone. Disbelief stand which I would wish to suspend. If I could, I would pretend that all destructive trains were mended and all was splendid in the end. And in some parallel pop-up world where plot twists have all petered out and every page is unfurled, the author picks a pen to press a period into place for his protagonist to prosper, smile printed on his face. Forgiven by friends and family, for it fused them all together, living calm, casual, carefree, and happily forever. However, reality rarely reads like a classic fairy tale. Faces fade to pale, and loose ends are left untied, frayed and frail, and he may have clawed his battered body from the brink of annihilation, but any rehabilitation is little more than fabrication, for oblivion still waiting, and the cycle never ceases, just the time that's spent between each manic episode increases, for some rage is far too blind to find the logic to abate it, and a boy can never fully raise from a mess that he's created, and even if the stakes have changed, the dice remain weighted for the facade to fall, face down into the gutter, feeling fated, and should stack chips fall, will he still flip the face cards or fold and resign? Until we know, the streamer sends his best regards from the borderline. Okay, that's better. Hi there. Uh, yeah, I'm Matt Cummins. Uh, I did think about having a stage name for a while, but then I figured I had to suffer with this through high school, so I might as well just own it at this point. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll kick things off. This is a poem about my mum, uh, which I don't need to Really? Is that better? There yeah. We go. There we go. Way better. Okay, I wrote this about my mum. Uh, it's called, I'm sorry, I'm a bit rubbish. <laughs> <coughs> I get told that I'm outgoing, and I owe that to my family because it's their unwavering support that's let me become the man I've grown to be. But I can't deny I've been a little selfish in the way I see commitments forged in blood. I've been lax, almost contact free. Forgetting all those little things like ringing Gran on Thursdays or dropping mum an email that might just brighten up her worst days. These little acts ain't much to ask and yet I fail, despite my internet. Ending up just penning bars instead of trying to reconnect. Too lost in life to ever member family members' birth dates and so it's always bloody flowers. In the flora, they're my best mates. I guess I kind of wanted to try and pen an apology. For all the things I take for granted after all the love you've shown to me. And though I may not be the perfect son, please know, you moulded me. 
The values and the principles that once you bestowed on me, I hold those dear, still now. They're the foundations that I built upon. The founding precepts of my worldview all inherited from one amazing mum. She taught me young. It takes a walk away. Instilling a gentle pacifism I carry with me to this day. That was a personal decision.